Hey guys, how you doing? My name is Neil. I'm a physics and chemistry tutor with Far From Standard. Hope you guys are all having a good day. Uh, today we're going to look at how to solve, specifically how to solve for the proportionality technique uh, during a direct current circuit. Okay? Now there's many steps that you can do when solving a circuit. We're going to kind of stop a little bit early. Um, and uh, we're also not going to go over how to uh, solve for resistors in parallel and series. Okay, That'll be a different video. Alright, so once you've determined all your you know, necessary components for your circuit, like your battery, a 60 volt battery, your resistors, you have an 8 ohm resistor, a 5 ohm resistor, and a 20 ohm resistor. Alright, so now we're going to try to determine the current through the circuit, and then maybe how the current splits up through the parallel resistors. The first step that you have to do is, you have to solve for the equivalent resistance. Okay, So, the equivalent resistance is determined by combining all of these resistors as if they were only one. So, first we're going to do the parallel. A 5 ohm and a 20 ohm resistor actually combine to a 4 ohm resistor. And then, there's an 8 ohm resistor and what appears to be a 4 ohm resistor in series. That's going to give us a 12 ohm resistor. We just add them up. So the equivalent resistance for this circuit is 12 ohms. Alright, so that's our, really our first step. For all circuits, we have to know what all the resistors combine into. The second step is taking that information and dividing by the voltage source and solving for the current. So we can determine how many electrons will actually be traveling through the wires of the circuit. The current is equal to V over REQ, which is going to give me 60 over 12, or 5 amps. All right, now the first two steps are really the most important. If you can't do those, then you won't be able to move any further throughout the circuit. So again, the first step was to determine the REQ, 12 ohms, and then once we have that information, it's pretty easy for us to get the current, which is 5 amps. All right, now this is where it gets a little bit tricky. And the current is going to split up when it gets to the parallel resistors. Okay? Well, why does it do that? Well, think about it. Kids are, you know, kids in my generation these days always like to take the path of least resistance. Okay? Whatever's easier for everybody. So most of the electrons are going to choose to go towards the 5 ohm resistor. Only a select few are going to decide, all right, we're going to take the path of greatest resistance and go towards the 20. So we really want to find out how many electrons decide to do either, either path. So again, at this spot, a certain number of amps is going to go there, and a certain number of amps is going to go towards the left. The way we do this is we assign the largest resistor the value x. And then we take the smaller resistor and we determine how many times smaller is it. Well, 5 is 4 times smaller than 20, so it's going to get a value of 4x. All right, now schematically, this represents that if an X amount of electrons goes towards the right, 4X amount of electrons are going to go towards the left. That should equal all of the electrons available in the circuit. So, proportionality says 4X plus X should be equal to the total number of electrons, which is 5 amps. And now we can algebraically solve for X x is going to be equal to 1 amp. Alright, now that we have a value for x, we can plug it back into our scenario and we can see that 1 amp of electrons goes towards the right and 4 amps of electrons go towards the left. Now that holds true in our case that more electrons are going to want to go through the resistor with least resistance and only one amp of electrons goes towards the resistor of greatest resistance. Now once we determine this, we can go further and solve for voltage drops across a resistor, we can, we can solve for the power dissipated through each resistor. Okay, there's a lot of things we can do, but we really need to master the first three steps. Alright, once you master these, 
come back and, uh, and visit our website for more tips. All right, guys, have a good day. Bye.